something you should be aware of is that effective September 1st of 2023, Texas amended Section 11.43 of the tax code regarding how the appraisal district reviews homestead exemption status. So 11.43H of the tax code states that the chief appraiser, if they learn of any reason indicating that an exemption previously allowed should be canceled, the chief appraiser should investigate it. And subject to subsection Q, if the chief appraiser determines that the property should not be exempt, the chief appraiser shall cancel the exemption and deliver written notice of the cancellation with, within five days of the date that the exemption is canceled. And what has been added to the code is H1, which you see here on the screen, which reads as follows. And it says that the chief appraiser of an appraisal district shall develop a program for the periodic review of each residence uh, homestead exemption granted by the district under section 11.13 to confirm that the recipient of the exemption still qualifies for the exemption. The program must require the chief appraiser to review each resident's homestead exemption at least once every five tax years. The program may provide for the review to take place in phases with a portion of the exemptions reviewed in each tax year. So really what this means is, is that you should be expecting for the appraisal district to be contacting you on a regular basis to require you to verify if you still qualify for your homestead exemption as part of the program required under the newly added 11.43 H1 of the tax code. And if you were to fail to prove your qualifications in a timely manner, then the appraisal district will remove your exemption. I think this is important for everyone to understand that whether you've done anything with a transfer of your deed, you know, whether you came and worked with our law firm, for example, and perhaps added a deed from your individual name um, into your trust, or whether you did nothing at all for, for years and years and years, everyone in Texas is going to start getting notifications from appraisal districts where they're going to be asking you to verify, for example, do you still qualify for home, homestead exemption? Is this still your primary residence? And if you do not respond quickly, you will be losing your tax exemptions. So as a result of that, I wanted to also talk briefly about, uh, well, how would you fill out your homestead exemption, particularly for those of you that have put your house into a trust? Um, if you put your house into a trust and it's uh, sort of uh, one of the most common types of trust where you take your house from yourself as an individual and you just give it to yourself as trustee of a trust, you're staying in full control. Um, it's called a qualifying trust. And if we did it for you, it's got all the language that you need in the trust to say, hey, you still qualify for actually all of your tax exemptions, Homestead certainly being one of them. Um, this video uh, in this second part is going to show you what to do, which is just fill out the tax exemption the same way you always have with one change, which is um, now the owner is you uh, as trustee of the trust. And you see on the screen here, uh, I mean, our office is in Collin County, so I just pulled up the Collin County uh, Homestead Exemption form. And so if they ever send you one of these, and remember, everybody is going to get one of these repeatedly now under this new law, where you have to prove that it's still your homestead. That's whether you worked with our office or you've done nothing for 20 years um, and, and your deed stayed the same. Um, so I just filled this out with generic information, property ID, geographic ID, fill all the same stuff in that you may have filled out years ago, right? Um, and you're trying to apply for the general residence homestead exemption. If you qualify for other exemptions, fill out every exemption that you uh, would qualify for, right? But right now I'm just talking about the general homestead exemption. And you would answer all the other types of questions. I'm just putting in the most basic, so uh, we're not dealing with surviving spouse situation, no disabled veteran. But if that applies to you, fill this out truthfully, right? Were you receiving a homestead exemption on your previous residence? Uh, maybe you were, so I, I, I clicked yes. But again, you just have to fill this out completely accurate to your situation. Are you transferring exemption from a previous residence? Well, well, no, not in this instance, because we're actually talking about a scenario where you're just you're just re-explaining that it's the same house that you lived in. You just transferred it from yourself to yourself as trustee. And so we're not really transferring it. We're just saying we're keeping it. Are you transferring a tax ceiling? We're not 
we're not assuming any sort of special tax uh, situations. We're just qualifying again. Uh, there wasn't a previous residence. There wasn't a previous county. It's just me. Do you own the property? Yes. We're going to say married couple because that's common. So this was previously John and Jane Doe. The only change on anything in this form is now it's John Doe as trustee, Jane Doe as trustee of the Doe Living Trust. It's still their birthdays, so I just made up a couple birthdays. Uh, I just made up a couple driver's license numbers. They own it 50-50. Made up their phone number, made up a mailing address. Everything else exactly the same as you as an individual because as a qualifying trust, you're staying in complete control. And I just made everything else up. Whatever the date that the house was originally purchased, that's the date. I said that was the date that they moved in. The mailing address, the same. The legal description, whatever your legal description is. Uh, and none of these other special sort of sections apply, because we're just going to assume for this example that this was a very basic, normal type of application. Fill it out, sign it, print it, and sign it, send it in. Uh, one other piece of advice I would give, if you were to read all these important information pieces on the back that a lot of people don't read, uh, it will tell you that uh, that the chief appraiser may request additional information. If you have your house in a trust, they usually want to know that your trust is a qualifying trust. And anybody that worked with our law firm, it will be a qualifying trust. We'll make sure of that. And it'll be in your documents already. You could go ahead and send in the certification of trust document that we made for you. That's a short summary of your trust. And it'll it'll just have exact paragraphs and sentences out of your full trust document in it. You could just send them a copy of that if you want. Or you could send them a, a copy of the whole trust. But it, it has a section in there that says that your trust meets the property code in Texas and the tax code in Texas that lets you keep your homestead. So if you want to be proactive and just send them a copy copy, I wouldn't send the original, send them a copy of the certification of trust. You'll see that section that there says it's a qualifying trust if you read through it. Um, I would send that in, you know, along with this because they'll probably ask for it anyway. But if you don't, and then they send you an additional information request, just be ready for them to ask for that. You're going to be okay. It's in there. But that's what you do. And be ready for them to ask for this. And if somebody's watching this that doesn't have their house in a trust, still be ready for the appraisal districts to ask you to prove on a regular basis now, by law they're required to, that it's still your homestead.